Okay, class, in this last unit of the lecture, we'll go over treatment considerations, assessment, and discharge planning. So again, just like with everything that we do in acute care and even across practice, right, um, we're assessing the risk and benefit ratio, right? It, what's, what's the risk of working with this patient, providing treatment, and what are the benefits from this treatment, right? And that kind of goes back into our interpretation of lab values, right? that we look at things really across a spectrum, right, of risk. There's, there is, you know, very few absolutes now in contemporary uh, physical therapy practice in the acute care setting. Again, crucial, and I sound like a broken record, but it's because it's true. Plan first, understand the, the status of the patient, understand the lines and leads and all that stuff, make sure everything's involved. Make sure that we communicate that everyone is on the same page for the patient, right? Again, they're in a hospital for a reason, right? Status can change quickly. We need to make sure that as well, we're coordinating the schedule um, for that patient for that day, right? Um, certain things will take a priority or if a patient has imaging, right, or has to get a procedure, that's going to take precedent over the, the PT evaluation or other services, right? We, we gotta coordinate things, work within the team, try to strategize to, to make sure that they, they work with us, right? Um, and that we can see these patients, but we, we gotta coordinate things, right? And realize that, hey, like, you know, certain things will take precedent or priority, um, you know, throughout a given day. Um, understanding the needs in terms of, um, you know, if, if they've got a, you know, different uh, lines who we might need there to help us assist with stuff, How who might need to be there to help us assist with transfers, right? Do we need multiple people? Um, do we need to bring, you know, portable oxygen with that patient? You know, if we're going to be ambulating in the hallway, do we need to bring in um, other, you know, uh, uh, assistive devices? Watching our vitals, right? Again, while not every patient in the hospital is a cardiopulmonary uh, patient or, or patient of a cardiopulmonary condition, you know, the heart, the heart rate, blood pressure changes are frequently encountered in the acute care setting. So just keeping an eye on that and truly determining if a patient is tolerating treatment or our assessment, right? And we can get a pretty good indication of that by looking at their vitals. Um, and again, understanding the code status of the patient, right? Um, you know, and is there a DNR um, on that patient as well? And that all goes back to communication. So again, the more we can plan ahead of time, the more we can communicate, the more that we understand um, the schedule for the patient, their unique needs, the more effective um, and successful um, and safe our treatment for that patient will be. And I, I do want to stress, treatment in the acute care setting is not just ambulation, right? It doesn't just have to be ambulation, right? We can work on some of the same things that we'd work on in the outpatient setting. Now, obviously, right, most patients are not gonna be there for maybe more than a few days, but we can start them on a basic program or at least talk to them about potentially, you know, uh, things they can work on at home from a basic strengthening standpoint or uh, making sure that we set up that appropriate discharge, right, for um, where they're gonna go after that acute care, um, acute care uh, admission. Um, we can also work on airway clearance techniques if that's indicated. Teach them maybe some active cycle breathing or work on different things, right? So again, um, there's more to treatment than just ambulation. And a, a lot of the treatment, even though even if it is just ambulation, there's a lot more layers to that beyond just what we see from the patient walking. It's all the assessment. It's a, you know, it's a very cerebral process. All right. And then uh, assessment, right? So I have the infinity sign here for a reason, right? Um, and, you know, I'll say assessment in the acute care setting, it's a constant process throughout each session, right? Um, and again, remembering that patients aren't in the hospital very long, right? Typically a patient, you know, maybe post-cabbage is there for, you know, a you know, four days, right? We're long past the days when patients would be in the hospital for weeks at a time. It's just, it's just not how things work. Um, so typically, you know, you know, maybe our goals are set for a couple days, right? Being able to tolerate ambulation or independently or to uh, ascend stairs, right? Determining what their needs are and then uh, assessing how well they're able to perform um, those tasks 
in order to determine if they're safe to discharge home. So again, the, the needs are a little bit different, or timeline, or the needs are a little bit different because the timelines are a little bit different, but assessment, um, just like in any setting, is constantly occurring, right? We're assessing, you know, the first time we see them transfer from maybe supine to sitting, the first time whether they start walking, the first time, even while we're doing maybe some of our basic, you know, movement and strength screen to see what, what, what is their heart rate and blood pressure look like? What does the ECG change, right? Keeping an eye on all those things. So it's a, it's a constant process. And the last part we'll get into is discharge planning. And uh, I have this little, uh, little image here from uh, Simpsons where Grandpa Simpson walks into the bar and then immediately walks out. Uh, discharge in a hospital is kind, kind of like that. Uh, this is something we kind of start planning from day one of admission, right? We got to start thinking because there's a lot of, there's a long process that goes into it, right? In determining uh, where this patient's going to go, um, what's, what they're going to be authorized to receive. Sometimes, you know, we may want to send a patient to one type of facility, but based on insurance and other constraints, they may not be able to go there. So it's, uh, it's a little bit of a coordinated dance sometimes in determining um, where we're going to send the patient. So some options for patients, uh, you know, ideal goal for, for most patients to try to send them home, um, you know, the, the, to, to work on things with family. Um, if, you know, obviously if patients have some needs still, they're probably going to need uh, some physical therapy services. So, you know, we could also send them home with home health PT, home with maybe just outpatient PT if they're able to, you know, ambulate or, or, or leave the house safely, outpatient physical therapy. If they still have maybe some, some medical needs that need attention, maybe a subacute rehab or a skilled nursing facility or an LTAC, um, depending on their, their critical um, or the, their, their medical status and their medical needs, right? If they're not safe yet to go home, they may need to go to a facility for maybe another couple of weeks to, to work on um, one, the, the medical aspect that doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, an acute hospital admission. Um, but you know they still have they still have a need for some monitoring and maybe still have some rehabilitation needs as well that may not um, you know, permit them to go home safely and that goes back into that communication starting that with you know the entire team but especially the social worker or case management just making sure that we're all on the same page here we're communicating what the patient's able to do from a functional standpoint a rehabilitation standpoint. And that's why using those, those outcome measures or objective measures, a six minute walk test versus just a, an arbitrary distance of ambulation, doing a dynamic gait you know, index or maybe a Tinetti or Pomer or other some sort of um, structure balance assessment, like the mini best test to determine what, what is our actual balance performance, right? It's not just some you know, subjective arbitrary assessment of good balance, right? Well, they scored this on a DGI, I think based on what we've seen, the patient would benefit from maybe a, you know, skilled nursing facility consultation, or they had a completely normal score. They're, they're safe to go home. Um, you know, gate, you know, gate speed, you know, you can use the FIM, which is a pretty, pretty well utilized measure as well. So again, the objective data, right? What, what might require a little bit of an extra step, it makes this, uh, you know, our justifications for discharge planning, which is a big part of what we do, um, you know, it makes it it makes it a little bit stronger justification because we can point to the data. These are valid, reliable measures um, for ass assessing these different constructs of physical performance, right, and function and independence, um, and, and you know, and, and making sure that we have a place at the table here because there's there's research to support that you know often our assessments and discharge planning, um, if we're involved. Uh, it's a six, more successful course post post hospital discharge if the PT recommendations are in there. Um, so making sure that we you know and you know get ourselves involved, have a place at the table here because we we do a pretty good job because function's kind of the name of the game. And here's a little graphic here, um, just just showing kind of some of the options for uh, uh, hospital discharge. I'm not going to go through this. This is something you can read through. And things in determining, uh, you know, different different indicators for whether a patient's safe to go home or not, um, and where they may need to go to uh, once they're discharged. So, just in summary, again, probably the biggest takeaway from acute care management is that's a team aspect. Again, I stressed communication, and it it couldn't be more true, right? Because you're you're not just it's not just you and the patient right? Or even just you in the rehab department with occupational therapy, right? 
um, and PTAs and CODAs, right? It's us with the nursing staff. It's us with the physicians and surgeons and respiratory therapists, right? Coordinating things with a pharmacist, coordinating things especially with a social worker and case manager, and, and most importantly, the family, right? There's family or, um, you know, the or caretakers, communicating with them, getting them involved, as well as the patient, keeping them as, as the center, right? Because um, you know, ultimately, there we're, we're here to serve the patient. Um, and communicating with the family um, helps, and of course, the patient helps them take an active role um, in, in, in their care, right? And if the patient's going to discharge home, especially, right, the family is going to be probably responsible for a lot of the uh, the care post hospital discharge, right? So getting them involved, right, in and in, in this, right, giving them some, um, you know, an, an active role in in working with a loved one, a family member is is, is crucial, right? Um, and again, keeping the patient the the focus of care um, as well, and making sure they have a, a voice uh, to you know to in any of our decision-making in terms of their of their care while they're in the hospital and, and where they're going, right? So um, that's, again, the basics of acute care physical therapy. We got a little uh, unit on labs and lines um, for you guys to go through, kind of supplement some of the, the skill video that we have. Um, again, you know, every setting is gonna be a little bit different, but these basic constructs and core competencies ring true um, in uh, irrespective of settings. So thank you very much.